Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click the link below, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be doing the three things that you should never be using on your face. Now, I've done a similar video, which I will link up there, um, about ingredients and products that I would never use on my face. This video is gonna be focusing much more on what we call um, the applications and the mechanics um, of skincare. It'll become more clear as we get into the video, but these are the three things which if you're using, promise me one thing, you will stop and chuck them out. Now, number one, pore strips. Oh, it, it, I don't understand, I cannot, cannot, cannot understand p the pore strip, the industry, why people use them. Now, I'm guilty all the way through my teens, I relied heavily on pore strips. I had the most clogged, blackhead laden nose you could possibly imagine. So trust me, I've been there, I know how awful it is and how damaging to your self esteem having those just clogged pores can be. So I tried everything I could to get rid of it. First step was always, always over cleansing, over scrubbing and trying to remove it manually like that. And then I resorted to pore strips. And what they are is basically just a strip of material which has a super harsh adhesive on one side. It might have some ingredients in as well, a salicylic acid. It might have um, an AHA acid in there. It might have something in, in the strip as well, but primarily it's just an adhesive. You wet it, apply it to the nose, leave it to harden after about 10 minutes, then rip it off. Now. I just, I understand why people like it because as as consumers, we're trained to you turn the product over and you can see all the little bumps and what you think of the blackheads and things on there. So you think, oh my God, it's worked. And we are so engineered and trained to love products which we visibly see can working. I've got a Dyson vac at home. I spent extra and bought a Dyson vac because when I vac the house, I like to look at the clear receptacle and think, look how much dirt I managed to get out and I feel like I've done a good job. It's the same with pore strips. People love them because they show that they're working. You know that they're working. Now, a couple of problems with them. A, they are super, super aggressive. So that adhesive is really, really strong. It attaches onto the top, the plug, which sits on top of the pore and basically tears it out. Now, that's really good at removing that surface a plug that sits on top of the pore. It's not actually doing anything to go within the, within the pore and deal with the full clog. So the blackhead only forms because the sebum, the oil, the dead skin, the various things which are sat within that pore, which is clogging it, the top level reacts with oxygen and oxidizes. That causes the black head that you see. You rip that off and you think, wow, all of the blackheads have gone. Honestly, within half a day, they'll all be back because what is left, so the layers beneath that, then are exposed to oxygen and start to oxidize. It also pulls off all the really healthy, good skin that sits around the pore. And over time, if you use them time and time again, it can weaken the structure of the pore, which means actually you get more elastic pore walls, which lead to larger pores overall. So actually, if you keep using pore strips, instead of getting what you want to get out of it, which is smaller pores, clearer pores, um, less clogging, you're actually going to result in more clogging because the pores are going to be bigger, so have more room for dirt and debris and sebum to be in there. They're also going to be enlarged. So actually, over a period of time, you're going to be doing more harm than good, and I just hate them. That's before we get into all of the chemicals which go into those super harsh adhesives, which are so bad for your skin. The actual tearing action can damage capillaries and veins in the nose. So around here, you can often get, if you overuse them, get spider veins um, and thread veins, which are those little red veins which sit usually in the crack of the nose which are really hard to get rid of and look over time as they get more and more of them look quite unsightly so it's just super super bad also there's very little active ingredients in these which are going to be doing some good work so you want to use things like salicylic acid to really get into the pot and clear that out i would recommend instead of using a pore strip First of all, toss them in the bin. The first thing you can do is chuck them out and never use them again. But you all do a pore strip. They're probably like the go-to Instagram pore strip. They're the worst because they actually claim to have active ingredients that are going to help in there. And actually, it's just as bad as all the other ones. So especially if you've got those, chuck them out. What you should be doing is using a warm washcloth, flannel, whatever you call it in the country where you are. Use a warm washcloth and hold that on the nose. What that's going to do is open up the pores and um, allow 
the pores to be more receptive to the ingredient that you're going to be putting on. Then apply a concentrated salicylic acid. I use the Nip Fab 2% salicylic, which is absolutely gorgeous. Fully recommend that. Apply that to the skin. Leave it on the skin for... 15 minutes till it's soaked in, then you can wipe it off and continue with the rest of your routine. That is going to be super effective if you do it regularly. I wouldn't use a strong salicylic acid like that every single day. I'd probably use every other. If you keep regularly doing that, you're going to see such a reduction in the size of the pores and in how clogged those pores are. Now, I'm not going to promise you miracles because the size of the pore is determined by a number of things, genetic amongst others, hormonal. There's all sorts of different reasons why you have larger pores than some other people and you can't actually counter that with many ingredients so i don't want to give you false hope but you could certainly shrink the pore and declog the pore using a warm washcloth and salicylic acid and um, concentrate and you won't have any of the damage any of the drama from the horrible 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 pore um pore Pore strips, that's like, I can never say pore, anyway. Um, also, they're not particularly environmentally friendly because you've got all of that adhesive and you've got the leftover thing in the packaging which has to go in the bin and probably has been landfill. So they're just generally a no. Rant about that over. My second thing, also, along a similar line, is makeup wipes. Now, if you've been a regular to this channel, uh, you'll know I loathe, I hate cleansing wipes, makeup wipes, whatever you want to call them. They are just awful and i explained to you for a few reasons why so first of all they're so environmentally damaging and wasteful if you ever go to a beach if you go along for a walk on the beach here in the uk you cannot cannot walk down a strip of beach without seeing wet wipes face wipes because people flush them down the toilet they don't get taken out in the sewers and they end up on our beaches and just end up as litter and you're just creating things that are really 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 difficult because of the preservatives and things that are in there to biodegrade so they're absolutely awful for that they also don't do a particularly good job so um if you if you imagine you've got a full face of makeup or even if you don't wear makeup you've just got a full face of skincare and SPF from the day and you want to take it off you take a cloth you wipe it you're not actually wiping most of it onto there you're just smearing it across the face so areas of bacteria that you might have here end up smeared across the whole thing you're just creating a mess and then people think because they can see it on the washcloth again it goes back to the pore strip you think because you can see it it's working absolutely must 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 be working must keep using it rubbish there's still so much left on the skin i would much prefer to see people do a double cleanse or even just a single a really good effective single cleanse and to toss out the makeup wipes get rid of them you don't need them that's before you get into the fact that they're packed full of preservatives and um, colorants fragrances things that are just really drying and stripping to the skin and you rub and because they're not particularly great at removing makeup people rub and they rub and they rub and by doing that you create inflammation you create create damage to the skin it could lead to hyperpigmentation it's just a minefield of awfulness <laughs> so if you're using face wipes toss them out now i'm not gonna be a total and total sort of zealot when it comes to face wipes i do understand there is a time and a place you know if you want to tidy up a bit of makeup you've you know you might have gone wrong with your winged eyeliner you're trying to do a fabulous winged eyeliner it goes a little bit wrong and you want to use one to wipe it off it's not going to do any harm it's absolutely fine some people like to use it to remove swatches and things on their arm clean their hands again it doesn't get around the environmental impact of the product but it's absolutely fine so i'm not saying there is no place at all for the makeup wipe i just think if you're using it every single day to remove your makeup you're doing your skin a disservice because you're not effectively cleansing and you actually creating dryness and damage which you just don't need in your life so take them put them in a drawer don't toss them out put them in a drawer and use them very sparingly when you absolutely have to and then don't repurchase them so that's makeup wipes awful and the third and final thing i'm going to say is manual exfoliating tools now the number one i'll put an image of that is clarisonic everybody's heard of clarisonic everyone loves clarisonic but there's loads and loads of different ones out there the ones with what i'm talking about is the ones with the brush that actually um, rotates and exfoliates deep cleanses whatever the skin i hate these and there's a couple of reasons why i hate them one they're super expensive on the whole and i don't think you need them in your skincare routine i don't think the cost is rel is relative to the um value that you're getting out of it you can use your fingers to get a really good 
exfoliation and cleanse you don't need one of these the claims on them are outrageous so they say the ultrasonic waves deep cleanse and deep clog and a load of old rubbish actually what you're doing is just scrubbing a little bit harder than you would normally with skin and that's where i have the issue it's the scrubbing so people use them too frequently now clarisonic if somebody said to me can i use a clarisonic once a week Absolutely. If you want to do a really deep cleanse once a week and use a Clarisonic or similar device to do that, I think that would be really good and really effective. If you have a day where you're wearing a heavy makeup, you know, you go for a full drag look because you're going out with girls and you want to look fabulous and you want to take that off more effectively, yeah, that would be a time where I would use a Clarisonic. But I see influencers and Instagram people using it every single day or the way that they actually use it. They use it to... Um, with every single cleanse that they do. So you might be using it twice a day. It is way too much for your skin. These are quite harsh tools. And I think the problem I have with them isn't that there isn't a place for them. It's that people never use them correctly. What I want to say to people is if you've got one, cut, just check how often you're using it. If you're using it once a week, fine. If you're using it a couple of times a week, that's all good. If you're using it every single day, that's really, really bad for your skin. It's actually akin to like a manual exfoliant, like a scrub with the damage it can do. Um, and that can lead to a whole host of problems down the line. Also, they're not particularly hygienic. So your hands, if you're doing an exfoliation with your hands, hopefully you wash your hands before you do your routine. These brushes are really hard to keep clean. Even the most fastidious cleansing obsessed and trust me i've you know i've used them in the past and i am obsessed with germs and trying to get them clean i give it a risk of, still it's really hard to get in between each of those bristles and if you're using it every single day you're gonna get a build up of things like bacteria and stuff so then people dunk them in dunk them in rubbing alcohol to get rid of that which isn't fully effective and then the alcohol might go on your skin and dry you out it's just a minefield of grossness so <laughs> and that's the technical term so i just i think if you've got one of these don't chuck it out a because you probably spent a hundred dollars on it and you don't want to be chucking out a bougie product like that but also there are places for it i just want people to tone it down and think how often do i need to use this product and when should i use it if you do that they're perfectly safe i think the reason i'm including it in this list is because nobody seems to use them according to how they were envisaged being used by the creators if that makes sense so guys, that's my rant over. It's like a rant for a Sunday. I'm filming this on Sunday. It'll be uploaded on Monday. So that's my Sunday rant over. If you've got these products, pore strips, definitely throw out. Stop using. There is no time or place for a pore strip. Get rid of it. Use a proper, either detoxify mask, like a charcoal mask by L'Oreal. That's gorgeous. Absolutely fantastic. Use a salicylic acid with a warm washcloth. You'll get better results with none of the damage. Toss them out. Face wipes, makeup wipes, Put them in a drawer and use them very sparingly when you absolutely have to. There is a time and a place. I appreciate that. I can't think of many where I would choose to use them. But there is a time and a place. Maybe, you know, I think if you're going to use, if you need that, I would personally just get a micellar water. The Garnier do a tiny little micellar water. Fantastic. On a cotton round, it does exactly the same thing. You don't have loads of the harsh chemicals that are in there. And you certainly don't need to scrub as hard because it's much more effective than makeup wipes, which let's be honest, are just a bit rubbish. And third, but keep them in a drawer, use them up, don't repurchase. The cleansing tools, I would say, have a look and just reassess how you use them in your skincare routine. I'm here, so if you want to reach out and say, actually, how often should I use it? This is my skin type, this is what I want to achieve, how often should I use it? Leave me a comment below, I'll answer every single comment. We're getting flooded with comments, which is fantastic. So I am taking a day to respond to them. So if I don't respond straight away, I'm sorry, but I will get around to responding to every single comment. So leave me a comment and I'll get back to you with any questions that you have. Hopefully you've really liked this video and found it informative. So give it a thumbs up and um, follow us at Instagram at Skin Mad. We've got some amazing content coming out on there, which I hope you're all enjoying guys. And our follower base is just growing and growing and growing, which is fantastic. Until the next video, guys, I love you lots. I hope you're staying safe and well, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.